the eugenic ideas of, uh, of the uh, inheritable nature of various undesirable uh, physical and mental characteristics found their ways to Finland in the um, late 1800s. Uh, the actual breakthrough of, of uh, eugenics uh, has often been located to 1912, the year when the, the first international conference on, on uh, uh, eugenics took place in London. And that conference brought out the aims and, and practical implications of, of eugenics, which were reported largely even, even in Finnish uh, newspapers. Uh, especially enthusiastic advocates uh, of, of eugenics in Finland were many influ influential medical doctors and, and professionals who were in charge of the institutional care of, of people with disabilities. Also, the Swedish-speaking uh, upper class uh, was especially keen to embrace uh, and implement uh, eugenic principles. And, for instance, Finnish language was seen as one indication of, uh, of, uh, of uh, <laughs> how do you say, uh, racially uh, kind of a... Degenerate trait? Yeah, degenerate trait. Yeah, that's the proper way to put it. Uh, uh, and the Finnish uh, civil war in 1918 uh, and the following financial uh, crisis strengthened uh, uh, the general disgust against groups considered as morally dubious and, and finan financially consuming. And unsurprisingly, uh, the defeated part of the civil war, which consisted mainly of working class and, and socialists, uh, was seen especially dangerous regarding Finland's prosperity. They were, these people were often referred as, as intellectually feeble and patho pathologically fanat fanatic in their hatred towards the bourgeois. How do you say bourgeois? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. Uh, especially individuals with a, with a poor intellectual competence uh, were seen to be prone to live uncontrollably according to their instincts, and mainly sexual instincts. They suffered from moral insanity, uh, inborn incapability to not know right from wrong. So something needed to be done, uh, and that something uh, occurred in, in, in several ways. At first, people with unfavorable uh, hereditary characteristics were isolated in, in institutions. But that, that really didn't work, because uh, institutions and segregated environment uh, provided uh, the in, these inhabitants with, with, this, with supposed endless sexual urges, uh, just a sheltered environment for breeding. Uh, another way uh, was to prevent uh, certain people from getting married or grant them a marriage permit only if they were sterilized. Uh, and according to the 1929 Marriage Act, Kinship, insanity, and idiocy uh, constituted unquestionable impediments to the, to the marriage, uh, whereas marriages of individuals with epilepsy, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, or a marriage between uh, two congenitally deaf persons was, uh, was conditional on, on, on precedence, a special uh, license. And corresponding uh, regulations uh, had been enacted, for example, in Norway and, and Denmark. But uh, it was soon noticed that marriage acts were really ineffective because people tend to have sex even though they're not married. So, so the next step uh, was sterilization, which offered a cheaper, more effective, and so it was said, more humane way uh, than institu institutionalization to prevent people with unwanted characteristics uh, from having children. Uh, sterilization was seen to be the only effective way uh, to prevent uh, the morally insane people from breeding, uh, and which because this was thought to be due to their uncontro con uncontrollable uh, sexuality. And the report of a sterilization law commission in 1929 eliminated this supposed brute fact uh, with various cautionary example true to life cases. Uh, and these are my um, uh, translations. 
So well, there were quite a few of these cases that were reported. So first of all, SR, feeble-minded 27-year-old butcher's daughter, even-tempered, could be looked after at home, unleashed, unless she was not extremely prone to practice sexual intercourse, therefore has lately been looked after in the county mental hospital, gave birth to an illegitimate child while being at home. Now the word unleashed or without special monitoring, it was um, a bit difficult to translate because it's usually, the word that is used there is, is used only in relation to animals, like if wild animals are being in the wild or without unleashed. So I think actually the unleashed is a, is a proper term. And another one, HR, feeble-minded, 37-year-old uh, workman's widow, fit for work and even-tempered, could support herself but is very lustful, constantly looking for male company when not institutionalized, has given birth to two illegitimate children. And this constantly looking for male company, the, the way the tone of the text is like, that these people are like madly looking for sex all the time. Uh, so, uh, and uh, surprisingly, the commission constituted only sort of 10 men. So, now, now the idea of uh, uncontrollable uncontro 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 and, and wild sexuality did not refer primarily um, to the quantity of sex uh, between eugenically dangerous people. It referred mostly to, uh, to, to its quality. Uh, this me meaning... Uh, that the sexual activities of women with mental impairments were regarded dangerous uh, because sex in their cases resulted with great probability uh, in a birth uh, of a child with similar uh, characteristics, uh, similar unwanted characteristics. And another fa factor explaining the undesirability of a certain people's sexuality had to do with the dominant uh, moral and legal norms of the time. Uh, according to Christian morality, extramarital sexual affairs were condemnable, and also the criminal code uh, at the time defined extramarital uh, sexual affairs as crimes. So, on eugenic, moral, and, and on, on criminal grounds, certain people's sexuality was was largely considered as undesirable. 